Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Neil here with bikepacking.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about bikepacking with a dropper post. I know many of you already understand the benefit of a dropper post, but essentially what it allows you to do is drop that saddle far enough down to get it out of the way so that you can descend with confidence. It really has changed the way bikes have been developed and riding styles and really riding abilities. So when you're bike packing, you don't want to change the way your bike rides. You're already used to it. So being able to accommodate a dropper post while bike packing is something that's definitely high in my priority list and I'm going to show you how to do that now. The first thing that you need to consider is the clearance of your bike. Every bike is a little different and every individual is a little different. Uh, this is a full suspension bike, um, which actually is a lot more challenging to fit a dropper post on with the seat pack because that rear shock actually moves and compresses that seat closer to the tire. Gravel bikes, road bikes, hard tails, those are all a lot easier to fit a dropper post and a dropper bag. So most dropper specific pack manufacturers require five to eight inches of clearance between the rear wheel and the saddle rails. On this bike, what I'm looking at here is 11 and a half or so. Uh, and then when I'm compressed, we've got basically looks like eight and a half. So that would probably work for most bags. The thing I've noticed with this bike, uh, different seat tube angles also kind of play a big factor. This seat tube angle is a little bit more slack. So the seat is actually a little bit further back, which in turn actually makes uh, the compression of the seat to the tire uh, a little bit closer. Um, so every bike is different and that's something you really need to think about. One really cool trick that I like to use for full suspension bikes is actually taking out the air pressure of my rear shock and actually seeing how much clearance I have. So maybe when before you even purchase a bag, you should do this. So what I'll do is take the air pressure out here. All right, so that's full compression. Saddle rail to tire is about four inches. So almost all dropper bags will not work properly without rubbing. So a few things that you can do, adding a, a wolf tooth valet to the dropper post so that you can actually take up 25 mils of your dropper post spacing, which essentially isn't much, but it'll give you maybe another half inch or so. The other thing you can do is add pressure to your shock maybe 10, 20, 15 more pounds of, uh, of pressure to stiffen up the shock so that you don't use all of the travel. Obviously that's not ideal, but uh, if you do wanna keep your dropper post on your bike while bikepacking, that's something you might need to do. A few other things of note that will definitely affect your dropper post bag being installed. The fore and aft of your saddle rails, that is dependent on the fit of your bike but just make note of that, you know, wherever your, your saddle rail is positioned, if they're a little bit further, you might have a few more millimeters um, to work with. And then obviously seat post height. I always recommend for mountain bike to size down anyways, and that actually does help with um, your seat exposed seat post, which will also help with uh, using a dropper specific seat pack. So the other determining factor is the dropper post itself. So dropper posts come in all shapes and sizes from a variety of different companies out there. It seems like the options are endless. You have uh, options in the 27.2 millimeter diameter category, which fit most gravel or road bikes. And then you have dropper posts that go up to the 34.9 uh, mil diameter, which you'll find on more aggressive uh, mountain bikes. And they also vary in size of travel. So you can find dropper posts, I think anywhere from like 50 millimeters of dropper travel all the way to 200 millimeters. So there are options out there to fit your needs, which is super nice. Now I'm not gonna get into the ins and outs of how the dropper post works. Uh, Logan does a really great job in uh, the article that I've linked below. There's a few things that you have to make note of, and obviously that kind of goes back to the clearance situation, but the length of dropper that will fit your bike. Most new bikes come stocked with dropper posts will fit the insertion length of your bike. But when you're purchasing a dropper, say on a bike that doesn't have one or a new dropper, the determining factor in ensuring the right length is knowing the insertion length of the actual post, the insertion capacity of your frame, 
and then the saddle height. All three of those things will help ensure you get the right post in your frame. There are a few things of note when you are looking for dropper posts. Um, a handful of dropper posts just aren't strong enough to work with a bike packing bag. These things aren't necessarily meant for the extra weight that um, is associated with your bike packing bag. You're going to want to make sure the specific dropper post that you're using has enough power to actually lift the seat pack and the saddle up. Another really new and cool feature from dropper posts is adjustable travel. And so Transex actually launched this and I believe they sold it to uh, PNW, which uh, essentially you can undo the collar of the dropper post and adjust the travel of the dropper post from say like a 150 to 130 or something like that. Uh, so when you really do want to adjust and make sure that you actually have uh, a little bit more clearance, you can do that. Another cool new technology in a handful of dropper posts is uh, air relief valves. Sometimes air uh, kind of gets into your the chamber of your dropper post and that creates a squishy feel in the dropper. RockShox and Bike Yoke both have designed uh, technologies to basically let that air escape or reset, essentially make that, that dropper post not spongy and functional again, which is something that I highly recommend uh, when you're out bikepacking because you don't want to deal with a squishy dropper post. And one more thing you should think about regarding dropper posts is the lever itself. Many levers out there are just horrible. It takes a lot of effort to press down. I know Wolf Tooth has that light action lever, which is super nice. That's a mechanical lever that is super easy to press down. Obviously the RockShock Reverb Access uh, lever is just a really simple click. Um, but it is really expensive. So doing your due diligence is important on this, uh, especially if you're looking to bike pack uh, for a number of different days, um, having a really easy to use dropper lever is important. All right, and lastly, we're talking about the bags. So there are a handful of specific manufacturers that make seat packs for dropper posts. That being said, you can get away with using a regular seat post. You just have to customize it a little bit using probably a wolf tooth valet or some sort of customized uh, clamp around your stanchion. The nice thing about the wolf tooth valet is that it clamps and tightens around the stanchion uh, remaining in place all the time. It also helps protect the seal of your dropper post when completely compressed. This tool is made for these specific bags uh, or even smaller seat packs for your day rides. So they work really well on your uh, stanchion of your dropper post. They are kind of a, uh, a hassle to put on. They take a little bit of effort, but that being said, they work really well and they help aid in the stability of your seat pack. So right here, this is the Bedrock Black Dragon. And this is one of my favorite dropper post seat packs, mainly because it fits a lot of gear. It can fit up to, I think, seven liters. The nice thing is it uses their rail wing design that actually creates a really nice stable fit. This bag specifically uses the Wolf Tooth Valet, and it also has a smaller Velcro strap to fit around the valet. I've used this bag and I've had to lower the valet before to accommodate a different bike um, and it works just fine. Another bag option that some of us at bikepacking.com have used is actually a rack with a dry bag. This system will not only alleviate any potential for bag rub, but it will also aid in stability. The Revelate Design Vol is another one. Uh, JPAX just came out with a dropper specific bag. The Rockgeist bag here doesn't use the Wolf Tooth Valet, which allows you to use the full travel of your dropper post if you have clearance, that is. And there's a handful of other ones out there, but there's also just regular seat packs where you can just use your Wolf Tooth Valet clamp uh, and just kind of make work. I know Oveja Negra recommends using just a regular uh, Wolf Tooth clamp. You can be creative without actually having to spend money on a dropper post specific seat pack. All right, folks, and that about does it. If you have any comments or questions regarding this video, please leave them in the comment section below. I will add a few of the reviews of some of the bags that you saw today and also a bunch of uh, resources on bikepacking.com that you can kind of search through. Personally, I'm a huge advocate of using a dropper post. I would do it 10 times out of 10 if I had the opportunity. 
on a bike packing trip. It just gives me more confidence. It is a lot more fun and they are so reliable now that I'm not really worried about them breaking. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, pedal further.